Welcome to PatsCast. I'm Brad Whitaker. Some breaking news right as I am starting today's podcast. The New England Patriots will be bringing back tight end Hunter Henry. They had nobody at the tight end position heading into this offseason, and Henry is probably a top 10 NFL guy, certainly more than competent at the position, a valuable contributor. So it's good to see Henry will be back. I will get to that in just a moment, but want to get to the, the main topic of this podcast, which is about what the Patriots will be doing with the number three overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft. Some recent reports over the last few days are telling us that the New England Patriots and several scouts within the organization are not very high. They're not fans of North Carolina quarterback Drake May. Now, remember, heading into the 2023 college football season, Drake May was considered, at the very least, a close number two prospect heading into the draft. Some people even thought he was better than Caleb Williams, the presumed number one pick. However, his draft stock has really fluctuated since that point. And with the performance of Jaden Williams, particularly near the end of the season, that ultimately won him the Heisman Trophy. It looks like Daniels is probably going to be that number two quarterback off the board. And with some of the red flags surrounding Caleb Williams, I wouldn't even be shocked if a team like the Chicago Bears opted for Daniels over Caleb Williams with the first overall pick. But um, Drake May really does seem to be falling. Now, that doesn't mean he won't be drafted early. That doesn't mean the Patriots still aren't highly considering him for the number three pick. But look, if some of these Patriots scouts are reportedly not high on May, you know, there's speculation they may trade back, especially if Jaden Daniels is not available and gets snagged by the Bears at number one or by the Commanders at number two. And look, there is some smoke here. Like, I, 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 I like Drake May. You can go back and watch this podcast over the last few weeks. I think a lot of these reports are a total psyop that I think they're trying to undervalue him. So maybe even the Patriots have an opportunity to trade back and still draft the QB they like. I think he is more... NFL ready than Jaden Daniels just because of his ability to make more than a single read like Daniels does before abandoning the play. Um, Certainly has a great arm, can throw off balance. I think he can be mobile, although he's not the fastest. He's still fast enough and can plow through defensive linemen, linebackers, safeties in the same way that Josh Allen can, has a lot of similarities to Justin Herbert. But, you know, his, his backward throwing motion is a concern. We know we've had issues in the past with QB mechanics, with Mac Jones, certainly with Cam Newton. So I'm not shocked to hear a lot of scouts within the Patriots are not very high on Drake May. But, you know, this is a developing story, and perhaps the Patriots do trade back the number three pick, or they want to go after Marvin Harrison Jr. or or get one of the top tackles, which there are many. Joe Alt tops the list on most boards. Uh, But this is certainly a developing story, and, and something that I should note, Football analyst Chris Sims, uh, he's been historically pretty correct on his predictions, which I'll get to in just a second, but he ranks Drake May as the sixth best quarterback prospect in this draft. His order goes Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels at number two, then Bo Nix, Michael Penix Jr. at number four, J.J. McCarthy at five, then he ranks Drake May at number six overall, which is not great to hear if you're a Patriots fan. And like I said, he's been historically fairly accurate with these predictions. Just some examples. Back in 2020, he really predicted the success of Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert as his top two picks in the 2020 NFL Draft. Last year, he had C.J. Stroud as his top quarterback in the draft, putting him ahead of Bryce Young. And we all saw what Stroud did as a rookie in Houston. Now, doesn't mean he's been hitting on every prediction, right? I think he had Anthony Richardson down at four or five in last year's draft. Richardson, before he got injured, looked to potentially be the second best QB, maybe even the best had he stayed on the field the way he was contributing. Certainly racked up some fantasy points for my team when I picked him up as an emergency quarterback. Um, He wasn't great in 2021 either. He had Zach Wilson as the top quarterback ahead of Trevor Lawrence at number two and Mac Jones at number three, also had Justin Fields at five. But he, he was right about Trey Lance, who he put at number six, when everybody 
was very high on Lance, and the 49ers traded up to draft him, and he, he turned out to be one of the biggest busts in draft history. But look, these reports are suggesting that the Patriots are not super high on Drake May. Now, obviously, there are other reports that say the Patriots are going to address their need for the quarterback position at number three overall. Maybe they are considering J.J. McCarthy, who seems to be moving up a lot of the draft boards. I've been very high on McCarthy. I've been very high on Bo Nix. I have concerns about Michael Penix, but if he's on the field, I'm very high on him as well. Um, I like Spencer Rattler, too. I haven't known a lot about him, but I've been watching a lot of Xavier Leggett highlights, and I'm going, you know, Rattler does not have an O-line, and he seems to be pretty mobile, pretty elusive, and able to get passes off. And I'm watching some of these highlights just because I'm, I'm interested in Leggett, and I'm going, maybe this is a guy you can get in the fourth round. And you bring in a veteran, he can develop into something special. So don't write off Spencer Radler either. But look, Elliot Wolf is basically the de facto, de facto GM right now for the New England Patriots. He's known um, historically with his, his work with the Green Bay Packers, his work with the Cleveland Browns, for making a lot of draft maneuvers. So perhaps he is considering trading down or considering one of those top receivers, whether he trades down or stays at number three and opts for a guy like Marvin Harrison Jr., which, look, looking at the receiver position in New England over the last decade, I would be very happy with a number one guy like Marvin Harrison Jr., who I think is going to be at the very least a top 10 NFL receiver in week one. So that'll be interesting. Now, we also know the Patriots are highly considering bringing in a veteran quarterback um, at least as a bridge if they do draft a rookie in this year's draft. Um, there's been links to Baker Mayfield, uh, but signing him could be very costly. We know that um, the new offensive coordinator, Alex Van Pelt, has worked with Mayfield. The two have a very good relationship. So a lot of ties there. Um, but really, I, I think a lot of this will depend on if May's draft stock goes down. The Patriots decide to ultimately not do that but that's a decision that they're gonna to have to make fairly quickly with nfl free agency kicking off next week but seeing mike evans going back to tampa i think the highest probability is the patriots don't want to pay May baker mayfield and he re-signs with the bucks and gets that money that he certainly earned um showing that he is at the very least a top 20 maybe even top 15 nfl quarterback last season still plenty of rumors plenty of smoke about bringing in a veteran like jacoby Brissett. Uh, or Joe Flacco, who, in addition to Mayfield, have also enjoyed working with Alex Van Pelt, have great relationships with him. Uh, Brissett obviously played with the Patriots, had lots of ties to this organization. I'm more in favor of bringing in Flacco. I know he's like 39 years old or whatever, but um, I think as a one-year bridge, only one year, considering what he did in Cleveland, uh, being a comeback player of the year guy, he really would be a good veteran that is going to make the right throws and know how to run that offense right away. But, you know, Brissett wouldn't be the end of the world. I just seeing what Brissett did against the Patriots a couple seasons ago through a pick on the first play of the game when Bailey Zappi just absolutely dominated him. I'm not super thrilled, but he showed up in spots and uh, over the last couple of years. So not the worst bridge, but I don't think you're going to win a lot of ball games with him. There's all other guys in the market. Gardner Minshew is one of them. Um, kind of mediocre, but can be mobile. Certainly looked okay in the Germany game against the Patriots, a game that I'm trying to forget about. Uh, Ryan Tannehill, not the biggest fan. Obviously, he's up there in age. Uh, but, you know, he's still a competent NFL veteran. Maybe he's a guy you go with. But let's not forget about Russell Wilson, right? I mean, Wilson, it, you know, did not end well in Denver between him and Sean Payton with other players in the organization. Known to have a pretty big ego, even if he is an optimistic hardworking guy. There are concerns there in the locker room, but you have to at least consider it, right? Because you could get Russell Wilson at the veteran minimum. You're paying him like $2 million, not going to be much of a cap hit. And he has no incentive to take a big deal, right? Um, because Denver will just deduct whatever his next team pays him uh, with their next contract. So Wilson's going to probably sign for the vet minimum wherever he goes next. Now, I should note, there seems to be a lot of smoke between him and the Pittsburgh Steelers, who he's meeting with today. So I'm not expecting Russell Wilson to be in a New England Patriots uniform. I'm more of a fan of doing that. Listen to my podcast earlier this week where I break it down further. But you pull the average Patriot fan. Certainly, you pull Denver Broncos fans. They're all going to say Wilson is a bust. He may not even play in the NFL again after this next season. So 
it's a it's a big debate, right, on what's going to happen with Russell Wilson. But I think a one year veteran minimum prove it deal while a rookie quarterback sits behind him is not the worst idea, even if there are some issues with relationships in the locker room. Uh, other teams like the New York Giants, Las Vegas Raiders are probably considering moving up in the draft. They really do need quarterbacks. Um, Raiders really don't have anyone. And Daniel Jones not really cutting it for the Giants with as much as they're paying him. So if one of those teams is high on Drake May or they want to take J.J. McCarthy at third overall, expect the Patriots to consider that if they're indeed not high on Drake May and some of these rumors are true. But, hey, we'll watch in the coming weeks what Drake May's draft status is. Uh, it's lying season, as Greg Bedard likes to say in the NFL. So take everything. We report with a grain of salt. We're just going on what people are saying. And a lot of organizations float out their own fake news because they want to bring someone's value down so they can sign them for cheap or they want to misdirect so they can make another move. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Um, so as I said at the top of this podcast, some breaking news reported by Mike Garofalo and Ian Rappaport uh, jointly saying the New England Patriots are finalizing a deal to bring back tight end Hunter Henry. This is a no-brainer in my opinion. He was a guy I was considering for the franchise tag, but obviously the Patriots used the transition tag on Kyle Duggar instead. Uh, but they had nobody at the tight end position. And look, Mike Kosicki is good in spots, particularly the red zone, but he's really just a large receiver. I like Farrell Brown. I think he's going to improve. And there's a lot you can do with him, both as a blocker and a receiver at the tight end position. But Hunter Henry is really the only real weapon they've had at that position since Rob Gronkowski left. They obviously busted on a number of draft picks. Um, what was it? Dalton Keene, Devin Asiasi, some of these other guys. John U. Smith didn't work out, uh, even though he played great last year and just signed another lucrative contract. Looks like I think he's going to Miami. Correct me if I'm wrong. But Hunter Henry gives them a guaranteed weapon in that receiving course, someone that you can trust on game day to do the right things. And he's at least, I think, a top 10 NFL tight end. And he's probably going to get paid as a top 10 NFL tight end. We'll see how that deal um, manifests in the coming hours and what exactly he will be paid. But you got to bring him back. And it's good to see Henry still wants to return to the Patriots, regardless of who's at, at the quarterback position. With that really uh, broken down offense, he still wants to come back. So, you know, that that is a good sign that, free agents still want to play for the Patriots because there aren't a lot of incentives right now to go to go to New England unless they're willing to overpay. But gr glad to see Henry is back. And at the very least, they're keeping a weapon there. And right now we got Hunter Henry and Demario Douglas. And those are the only two real NFL starters, right, that are, are um, part of that receiving core. I hope they bring back a Sicky and Farrell Brown, but not the end of the world if you lose those guys and try to build up the tight end position, either through free agency, add depth there, or through the draft. But getting Hunter Henry is a big deal and probably will mean the Patriots will prioritize receiver over tight, tight end in the draft, if I just had to guess. Um, another story broke yesterday. The Patriots are adding tackle. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Chuck Wuma Okorafor, formerly of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, he's coming in, signing four days before free agency week begins. Uh, Okorafor was a third-round draft pick in 2018. He's been kind of a rotational player for the Steelers, uh, but ultimately became a, a pretty competent right tackle there. He did get benched midway through the 2023 20, season, uh, but he's had 61 NFL, start, uh, NFL starts, and I don't expect him to be the starter at the tackle position unless you know, we don't bring a Wenu back or we bring a Wenu back and draft another tackle and one of those guys goes down before the start of the season. This is more to add competent depth at the tackle position. And, you know, we, we really didn't have that last year with Vidarian Lowe, uh, who really hasn't been great filling in at the tackle spot. The last two seasons, uh, there's Riley Reef, who wasn't able to contribute anything. Still a few other in-house free agents. Trent Brown, Michael Wenu, as I said, who I hope they prioritize and bring back the same way they did Hunter Henry and Riley Reef as well. Now, 
Again, a core four, this is really just depth. Don't expect him to be a starter unless there's injuries, but it guarantees you at least have someone better than a Vidarian low out there in case you do lose someone at the tackle spot. Um, Cora Force contract will impact the Patriots' salary cap space. They signed him for a one-year deal with a base value of four million dollars, which could go as high as eight and a quarter million uh, if he does get a lot of playing time with incentives built in. So you don't have to use him. You're not paying him much. You do have to use him. Hopefully, he contributes and you pay him a little bit more, and he earns it with some of those incentives. Now, this signing will not impact the compensatory draft formula for the Steelers since he was released um, and is not a compensatory free agent. So Pittsburgh's not getting anything out of this. I think this is a great deal. Nothing to be too super excited about, but you do need depth on that offensive line, particularly at the tackle spots. They certainly have plenty of depth at the guard positions um, and even center. Hopefully David Andrews comes back as well. But this was a good move, but nothing that is going to be a, a, you know, going to elevate the Patriots. It's just going to help them not skip a beat, hopefully. If Owenu comes back and goes down, Trent Brown comes back or goes down, um, they sign a Tyron Smith or a Jonah Williams. Hey, go down. Certainly Tyron Smith has an injury history. Any of those come back, play the tackle position, they go down. Okorafor is going to be there, and hopefully that old line doesn't skip a beat. Some other news that uh, recently broke, the Patriots are also bringing back cornerback Alex Austin, who is re-signed. Now, he was set for exclusive rights free agency and still chose to return to the Patriots after they tendered him. Uh, Originally, Alex Austin was drafted by the Bills last season, uh, before last season, and was claimed off waivers by the Texans before he ultimately joined the New England Patriots. Only played about five games last year, uh, but did play 211 defensive snaps, recorded nine tackles, an interception, and defended two passes. Um, So Alex Austin, I think, is a a developing guy, certainly contributed a little bit. Not a guy who you hope to have out there in the starting lineup, but adds some depth there at the cornerback position. And certainly with Gonzo going down last year and other players um, kind of battered throughout the season, Alex Austin was able to step up and be there uh, to contribute for the Patriots and did a pretty decent job considering his role. So good to see he will be returning to the team. Uh, but that's it for this episode of Pat's Cast. Unless there is any breaking news, in the meantime, we'll be back next week as NFL free agency kicks off. Going to be a lot of breaking news, I'm sure, during that time. We'll be here to cover it. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, share it with your friends, and let me know in the comments. Uh, are you happy about the Hunter Henry deal? Do you like Drake May? Is he a guy you would draft at number three overall? Do you want to trade back the pick? Draft Marvin Harrison or you do something else, maybe McCarthy, maybe you get want to get one of the quarterbacks later in the draft. Let me know in the comments below. I'm curious to hear from you, and we'll be back next week.